Hey, Constantine, uh, nice to see you here in Bristol. Nice to, be, nice to see you too. Um, so we did have a look, an initial look at the Tip Top Audio uh, art system, but I think perhaps the explanation sort of was a little bit highbrow. So uh, we're going to have another crack at explaining, because right. we've got the full system here. And uh, the idea of, well, just to explain the concept for us before we well, get started. Uh, to put it simply, we want to, to, re to solve the tuning problem with Eurorack system. And I'm not saying this as a, something bad, like, you know, tuning is a relative thing. People do all sorts of weird things with synthesizers. However, music is not about frequencies, it's about relationships between frequencies. So in order to create mu music in a traditional way, chords, melodies, collaborate with other people, play in bands, play with other people, create something cool and then come next day and overdub something and not to worry about yeah. tuning, we decided to eliminate the dreadful <laughs> one volt per octave input because it actually free running oscillator means nothing. And I suppose also, um, if you're working polyphony, you really need it. And that's you one of the hardest yes, challenges, isn't it, yes. to get that all tuned up? So we started with mono voices and then we quick, quickly realized that it's actually very, very cool to do polyphonic patches. Right. Okay. And that led us to creating polyphonic modules. So what art is actually does, it takes uh, a note information, including note on and note off, and the pitch information down a regular quarter inch, uh, not a quarter inch, the mini jack cable, yeah. and passes it directly into the oscillator. And the oscillator knows exactly what pitch to play. Like, for example, here we have art out goes into three separate analog oscillators, monophonic analog oscillators, to create three oscillator patch voice, like a minimal wood. Uh, yeah, sure. And then uh, we have a one voice uh, uh, wave table which goes from a, s in, in a second art out and there is another out art out goes into the polyphonic oscillator that carries the polyphonic note information so it's basically same output and you decide according to the source whether it's monophonic or polyphonic right okay it's the same cable like you would use in a Eurorack system any cable will work any mini jack cable and it carries note information now the the USB C which is not a USB-C cable, has nothing to do with art. USB-C cables are, let me unpatch one of them and show you. The USB-C is just the connector because it's small enough for so your So it carries system. the sort of bus information effectively. It's a, eff effectively, it's a multi-core audio cable. Ah, like okay. a normal audio snake with eight cables inside. Gotcha. And we... So it's not a special cable? It's, or not is a spe it's a special cable because it's shielded audio cable. Right, okay. Because any, any regular USB-C cable is a data cable and it's not shielded right, properly okay. for audio. So use. does this start with the MIDI? So presumably you put MIDI, MIDI in... MIDI and comes... It yes. It, right now it starts with MIDI, with a MIDI sequencer. The MIDI information goes into the Octopus which converts MIDI information to art. We are working right now on uh, native art sequencers and also on CV to art converters. So uh, anybody could use art with their own sequencers that are used to, whatever that would be. And, uh, you know, the, we, we don't want to break people's workflows and replace their favorite sequencers, but we want to give the people the opportunity to have their sequencers running in tune with each other. So, uh, I mean, are you making sort of certain aspects of the art ecosystem open source so people can incorporate them into their own modules. Excuse me? Are you making certain aspects of art open source so people can... It is can an open source. Ah. It is not a proprietary system. We want people to embrace this because... Excuse me? Oh, we're we want people to embrace this format because it will benefit everyone. Right, okay. We, it's not... The only thing we want is for people come first to us because we want to ensure Demonstrate a precise how to do it, standardization yeah. of the format. We don't want Wild West. We already have been there with Eurorack. We want actual standard that everyone follows, but otherwise it doesn't cost any money for people. It's free for people to uh, use. We just want to make sure that uh, people 
implemented correctly. I noticed on a couple of these modules that there's a uh, you can switch it from art to to volt octave on the on that kind of control input as well, which looks like is that is that what I'm seeing there? There's the uh, ability to switch. That's the this so is the octopus. It has octopus a, out. Oh, here. But it has a five pins in input and a USB. Okay. You can use them both simultaneously on different MIDI channels. So you can, let's say, have run sequences running from uh, from a MIDI sequencer and use a keyboard to play extra voice over right. the same uh, converter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. It's like a merge on a almost, separate yeah. MIDI channel on yeah. a different MIDI channel. Uh, it's uh, eight art outs. Basically, can be monophonic card outs or can be combined into polyphonic clusters for discrete polyphony to use uh, separate monophonic oscillators or bunch of oscillators for separate, basically creating entirely different. Uh, so these VCOs, for I, each well, note. I suppose what I was getting at, these VCOs will only accept an art input the, or will they accept both? The analog one will accept still volt per octave right. and also function as a LFO if you want to. Right, gotcha. So basically it's a, a press of a button, it turns yellow, volt per octave, it goes blank, that's LFO. That's what I was, yeah, okay, yes. that's what I was And this is that, the okay. first oscillator we designed for the system, that's why it has the volt per octave. That's both, yeah, makes sense. To be honest, I have never connected it in a volt per octave scenario. Because it's, I'm so excited with the art and it works so good for me that we I did, never really need it. We did hear something briefly. Uh, yes. That's something to touch. So can so, we just have a um, little... Let me just... Let, let's listen to the polyphonic because it's uh, quite surprising and exciting yeah. to listen. Mind you, I'm not a keyboard player. So that's just playing a combination of... That, that is a, a wavetable six-voice oscillator going through a eight-voice analog filter controlled by eight-voice analog envelope. Right, gotcha. Going through a six-voice VCA, VCA, which we will replace with an eight-voice VCA. Right. All of them have the polytip connectors. We also have Octo-IO, which you can split the polytip signal into separate mini jack out so eight mini jack outs right with one and of course we have a multiple which we were thinking oh wait a second because we've been using stackables for so long we forgot that sometimes you need to mount signals yeah 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 in a conventional way so we had like fast to come up with a with a solution and create a, a mount mount for the polytip cable right because otherwise we wouldn't on the super boost we were like what should we control, a VCA or a filter? Like we had to choose. So when when somebody is uh, starting out, what would be the bare minimum? I suppose they would need to, the octopus. I suppose you need would to, be your yes, the octo you need an octopus to convert this, your MIDI signal. Or soon we will release the converters and the sequence native sequencers. I'm not sure exactly when, but I guess soon. Uh, the monophonic system will be available in October, so next month. Is right, it? okay. Uh, the poly will come a bit later, we're not sure when. It's still, we, now we're designing the eight voice analog poly oscillator. Uh, so basically, what you need is an art capable oscillator and an art capable sequencer, whatever that is, either an octopus which convert MIDI to art or native art or CV to art converter. And how, I mean, I, I guess. The sort of people that are going to be getting excited about this initially are going to be uh, the people who perform a lot with modular and think, I, this is going to simplify my setup so easily. Exactly. People who play live, first of all. People who collaborate with other musicians, being it other modular musicians or people in an orchestra, for example. You want to use a, a modular system with an orchestra. Now it's, it's just a matter of arriving at the orchestra, putting your system and playing. So, I mean, presumably that with the art control, there's like a master tune for, to be able to do that, right? Uh, it is, um, I mean, it's a, what is it, like normal standard Western tuning? Yeah, but what I'm saying is if you tune the whole system, do you have to tune each oscillator or is there just a single? You don't need to, uh, well, the process goes this way. We do initial tuning at the factory. We warm up the modules in the system, so they are actually in, at an operational temperature. 
we, uh, we do initial tuning which creates a tuning table. Because we don't want it to be bidirectional because it slows things down. We want it to be as fast as possible. It's 40 times faster than MIDI. Right. Uh, because when you combine uh, digital information with uh, CV and gates analog, which has no latency whatsoever, it becomes very obvious. So we really need to make it as fast as possible, like technically. So uh, what you need to do when you buy the modules, you put it into the case, you wait, you switch it on, wait for 20 minutes, make it warm, and then you do the fast auto-tuning. And what it does, it basically measures the, uh, the tuning inside and slight, makes slight right. adjustments, and then it keeps it this way. If you go from, let's say, a hot club into a cold studio, then you have to do the tuning well, I, again. I suppose what I was saying is if you need to change, if you've done that and you need to just basically drop it by a quarter tone just because the piano is old or whatever it may be, can you, can you retune the system away from 440? No, no, you, it's, it is 440 system. You can, however, um, I mean, you can do it on a, at a sequencer level. If your sequencer capable of uh, basically dropping the pitch somewhat, because right. it, it follows what the sequencer tells. The oscillator ah, okay. basically s receives a, a command. Like, I, you, I want you to play a C1, uh, for example. Yeah. And whatever the C1, I mean, I, I'm not technically, I, I don't know exactly how it works, but I would I assume it's possible on the sequencer level. Right, okay. But I'll just think because it sounds like, you know, it may be desirable to be able to use this system polyphonically, but that you might need to tune it to some weird instrument that is old and can't go to 440, might only well, work. Uh, or you'd have to you'd have to transpose, I suppose. It I suppose you we can you can do some micro tuning, but our I remember we were talking about this and I was like, well, you know, when when the last time you were listening to some Microtuning song on the radio. It wasn't about microtuning. It was oh. more about the global tuning. So oh, global need, tuning. The global. You need to tune it up or well, down a bit. From 440 yeah. to like uh, 43, whatever, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, right. right now it's 440. Maybe it's possible. Okay. Uh, so let's have a little more sound. We've talked right. a lot. Let's. Uh, okay. So. Uh, what was playing on this guy? Is this that? something separate? Oh, that's just distributing. Uh, what I'm using with the keyboard. The, 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 the force, you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. I am using as a MIDI sequencer, basically. If I press play, it will play. But uh, I'm not sure if it's actually... Let's see what it plays. Okay. And so that's playing some of these ATX1s. That's nice. So, what's the uh, what's the price for the octopus at the moment? Have you got a, have you got? Do you know what the, the cost is? I know exactly, but I need to confirm. You this. need to look at that. Yes, you know, in the past I used to remember all the prices, but with so many modules, it's very hard to, <laughs> to keep to keep track of how much they cost, especially the ones that are not released yet. Let me see. Okay, ATX one, two hundred twenty-five dollars. That's the oscillator. Octopus. 345. Okay. Vortex one is 245. Control path is the dual envelope with a built-in VCA and velocity input. Now you can actually, without any considerable patching with just one cable, you can patch velocity sensitivity very easily. And it's built in to the... Uh, it costs 150 bucks. Vortex 6 and all the poly polyphonic modules are not confirmed yet. Okay. So I'm not sure what so, that would be. So, I mean, be. Can, can you buy these now or is it... Are you actually able to buy all of them yet or are they still... Uh, in October, all the mono, 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 monophonic components will be available. Polyphonic will follow shortly, I suppose. Uh. I know for a fact that the Octa stages and the Octopass and Vortex are done. In, in my opinion, and I've been using them for a while. I mean, I just released those two, but um, they work. I didn't see any problem with them so far. 
the VCA so is done since a long time. So Octopus, so. I think the only thing that really kind of holds the system was the Octopus, which we were finding some of the fame people's favorite software output some weird stuff together right, so with it's MIDI. Just, it's just tweaking stuff. So right. we needed to make sure that actually works with as much. We, we know it works with Pro Tools with, with the force it works because that's what I've been testing it on. Uh, so it should be really out quite soon. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Constantin. Indeed. Thank you for coming, stopping by. And uh, yeah, it, it's really important to know that it's open for people to implement this technology to their yeah. uh, systems, to their prod new future products. It, this does not benefit us financially. You have to understand. It's not something that we will say, oh, you have to pay us. We're just trying to make no, a standard. No, we just want people make to a standard, yeah. just enjoy new modules, more new modules, all sorts of new modules, not just from us, but from everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank mm -hmm. you.